So let's analyze this circuit known as the model of an inverting operational amplifier circuit. And here we want to calculate the voltage output in terms of the input Vs. So here's our output, here's our input, and we want to find the relationship between those two. In other words, we want to evaluate the input-output relationship as a gain mu when mu becomes very large. Now the word inverting op amp, let me just give you a highlight of what that means. If I this signal is sinusoid and I put an input that looks like this and this starts at time t equals zero, we see that this is a sine wave, this is time, and this is voltage. Then the output will be inverted. Probably amplified a little bit since this is an op-amp amplifier and therefore you could see that whatever is positive here becomes negative here and what's negative here becomes positive here. That's what we mean by a inverting op-amp. In an earlier video we did an analysis where it was a linear combination and it was a non-inverting summer in which the output was not inverted when compared with the input. So how do we solve this circuit? Well the first thing we note at the input side of the circuit is that Vs and R1 can be transformed into a parallel combination such that we have Vs divided by R1 is in parallel with this resistor R1. So we did a source transformation from a voltage source in series with R1 to a current source that is in parallel with R1. Here we note now that R1 and R2 is in parallel. Now the control voltage Vx is equal to Va in which we denote this as a node A here and here and a node B here and here. So that Va is equal to Vx which basically is our control voltage controlling this voltage source at our output side of this circuit. Okay, so let's write a node equation at node A and we can do this by inspection. So what's connected to node A is conductance G1, G2, and G3. So we write here G1 plus G2 plus G3 multiplied by the node voltage VA and we see that R1 and R2 is connected to the ground reference and that the other opposite end of the resistor R3 is node B so that's minus G3 VB and then we have an incoming current source of G1 VS. Now we substitute the control source constraint Vx where VB is equal to mu Vx. And in this case we see it's an inversion so we'll put a minus sign right here. Now Vb is really equal to, when you see this, it's equal to Va. So it's minus mu Va. Now we substitute Vb into this equation here and we have G1 and then we note there's a VA here so this just yields G1 plus G2 plus G3 and we note we have one G3 here but when we substitute for VB we have a minus mu G3 the minus and the minus makes this a plus and this gets multiplied by VB, I mean VA, gets multiplied by VA and that's equal to G1 times VS. Now we want a relationship between VO and our input VS, but we note that VO is equal to VB which is equal to minus mu VA and that VA here 
when we solve for VA, VO is equal to G1 all over G1 plus G2 plus G3 1 plus mu and this gets multiplied by Vs as our input and we note the minus sign as well so this is our input the minus sign makes the output an inverted form of the scaled version of the input that gets multiplied and hence this is our relationship for VO let me highlight that so note again this is our input VS this is our output VO and this is a constant with a minus sign which makes that the output is an inverted version of the input also I need to add a mu in our numerator here because VO is mu times VA with a minus sign so let's place a mu in the numerator now let's take a look at this expression when mu is very large when mu is very large here in the denominator G3 times 1 plus mu is large when compared to R1 plus R2 so let's do that VO is equal to minus G1 over mu divided by G3 1 plus mu when G1 plus G2 is a lot smaller than G3 1 plus mu okay in essence what we have we see the mu's will cancel out let's say mu is a lot bigger than 1 so again we can approximate that I'll put a squiggly hind to represent an approximation now we have minus G1 over G3 since the mu's cancel and then we forgot the Vs as our input now when we substitute for the resistor values we just have minus R3 over R1 times Vs so that is the active device gain is large the voltage gain of the circuit only depends on the external two resistors shown here R3 and R1 notice this R3 and R1 are external to this device so it only depends on these external devices to determine the gain and the amplification of our input associated with this inverting operational amplifier model and that's the result of analyzing this circuit bottom line again is that these that this ratio is a function of external components not the operational device of the op amp that is the internal components associated with the op amp because we here we assume a very large gain and that what makes this unique so that the ratio is only a function of external components this case for example that's just R1 and R3 let me highlight this so VO is equal to the ratio with an inversion of R3 minus R1 times VS.